Hello, my name is Jiang Feng. Uh, I'm part of the media workflow info team at Netflix. Uh, as a local info team, we focus on building workflow and queuing systems. Conduct is a workflow system of choice in Netflix, and we also build a distributed priority uh, queuing system, which is used by Conduct at Netflix. So this presentation will cover some major changes for Conduct 3 for both UI and backend, and then we will going to talk about some coming Zoom features for Conduct. We have a couple of uh, engineers from Netflix here today who are the main mentors of Conduct. So feel free to post any question on Q&A &Q or the chat window. And we'll try our best to uh, address those. So last year, we released a major version upgrade, Conduct 3.0. So Conduct server so is that a Spring Boot application, which allows for easy extensions and is in line with where the Java commit is heading. Conduct 3.0 also requires Java 11. With this upgrade, we also removed uh, many deprecated APIs and made uh, Elasticsearch 6 as a default index implementation. Elasticsearch 7 is also available if needed. Uh, we added a workflow repair service to do auto repair based on the task or workflow status, which greatly improved our system resilience. So the next one is uh, the support for multiple evaluate types to the switch and inline uh, system task. So clients can choose to use either the simple value parallel evaluate or the much more complex JavaScript evaluate. We also done several major uh, optimizations for better performance and the easy extension to our system. So examples like the sub workflow optimizations and the introduction of a contract to support different implementations of a task concurrent execution limit. The most recent one is the optimization of the domain model simulation. So that's kind of a summary of uh, what are uh, the major changes for Conduct 3.0. Now I'm going to hand off to Alan to talk about what is coming soon for Conduct Backend. Thanks, Jafin. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Arvindan. I'm one of the engineers at Netflix working on Conductor. We are working on some exciting new features that I would like to share with you. One of our main goals this year is to improve developer productivity. The first feature that I'm personally very excited about is the support for debugging workflows. We believe that this feature will dramatically improve productivity when workflows are authored. I'll briefly explain what debug mode is. When a workflow runs in debug mode, the execution pauses after each task. Before proceeding to the next task, developers can change the previous task output and also the next task input. The next task could also be completely stubbed out by providing an output for that task. Stubbing out a task will come in handy when workflows have tasks that are not yet implemented or the implementation is not accessible when the workflow is authored. Debug mode will also seamlessly integrate with the definition editor that Peter will cover later in the talk. Our goal here is to provide a debug experience for workflows that is on par with the code debug experience that developers are familiar with in IDEs. Next, we're also collaborating with Arcus on a Java framework for testing workflows. This framework allows workflows to be tested end to end in a continuous integration environment like Jenkins or GitHub Actions. With support for debugging and unit testing workflows, developers have more tools to author and maintain their workflows. Conductor's default persistence is based on Dynamite, and the default queue implementation is built on Dynaqueues. The Dynaqueues project is deprecated and is no longer supported. With help from Arcus, we are planning to release a high-performance queue implementation that is based on Redis. The Redis implementation will succeed the deprecated DynoQ implementation and will become the default. We'll also be releasing a poll data implementation that is based on Redis. Last but not least, a common feature request from conductor users at Netflix is the support for scaling task workers. More often than not, users have to manually scale their task workers to meet demand. QDEP-based auto-scaling helps in certain cases, but it does not support like final grain capacity management 
when a task is shared by multiple workflows. This year, we are addressing this with what we like to call managed tasks. Managed tasks will have a tighter integration with conductor than a traditional simple task, and it can be provisioned and scaled by conductor on demand. The first implementation of managed tasks will be built on an internal Netflix serverless platform. But just like other extension points in conductor, our goal is to make managed tasks a contract that can support other serverless providers like AWS Lambda, Google Functions, Azure Functions, etc. Um, we also have some housekeeping announcements to make. We are introducing a new repository for community contributions called Conductor Community. This repository will be jointly managed by Netflix and Arcus. We expect that someday community built modules scattered across GitHub will be hosted in this repo. But in the second quarter of this year, we will be moving some community contributor modules in the conductor repository to the community repository. Some of you may have seen the announcement that conductor 2.0 is no longer supported. We've been running conductor 3.0 at Netflix for more than a year. It's stable and is released frequently. We encourage everyone to migrate to the latest version. If you have any questions about the migration, please reach out to us using the discussions tab in GitHub. Also, if you're using Conductor in your organization, please take a moment to add your company name in the who's using that MD file. Finally, contributions are always welcome. If you're interested in contributing, you can start with issues tagged with the help wanted label. We ask that contributors engage with us by creating a discussion before starting to work on an issue or feature. With that, I'd like to pass it on to Peter to talk about the Conductor UI. Hi there, um, my name is Peter Lau. Um, I'm the full stack engineer on the media workflow team here at um, Netflix and uh, my main responsibility is the uh, Conductor UI. So first I'd um, like to review some recent developments in this area. Um, Version 3 release of Conductor provided us with an opportunity to rebuild the UI from ground up. This, um, so the new UI is a React application. It's uh, got a material UI-based design system. And unlike the previous UI, this is a pure browser-based single page application that integrates directly with the native Conductor backend API. So this obviates the need for a separate Node.js backend and provides you know, us with a larger set of deployment options for example, you could use a hosted S3 bucket, simple web server like Apache and Nginx, or even a CDN. Next slides, please. Um, we've uh, rebuilt the workflow execution search and discovery interface, and also the, uh, the workflow and task definition interface so to, to utilize um, client-side caching extensively using this library called the React Query. So this um, addressed many of the performance issues um, we encountered with the previous UI. Um, we've improved the uh, workflow visualization. Um, you might remember the, uh, the Christmas tree node, for example, and from, from the old UI. So we've uh, adopted some more idiomatic sort of activity diagram symbols. Um, we've upgraded the support for high cardinality fork joins and retries. And we provided a, a Gantt chart like a timeline view for you to track the progression of your, um, your tasks. Um, this UI has been uh, in production, new UI for several quarters now here at Netflix and um, it's being used daily by our studio engineering teams with you know, some pretty elaborate workflows. But having said that, if you encounter any bugs or have suggestions, please do bring it to our attention in GitHub and I'll you know, get on it. Um, news, next slides, please. So I'd like to uh, move on to the uh, UI roadmap for, the, um, for this quarter and the coming quarter. Um, and I'd like to mention that this quarter we'll be incorporating work that is either a direct contribution form or developed you know, in close collaboration with the folks at AUKUS. So, so credit's gotta go to um, Viren and Boney and their team. So right now the, um, the definition and task views are re read only in the um, conductor UI. 
we want to upgrade that to a uh, JSON editor experience. But keeping in mind that sort of JSON is really the main um, mechanism our users here at Netflix interact with uh, definitions. Sort of, we want to provide for users to be able to modify and persist definition payloads. Um, it's a, a Monaco editor based implementation, and Monaco is the, um, it's from Microsoft, it's what backs our VS code. It's, um, so it's going to come with all the goodies like JS syntax highlighting, JSON syntax highlighting. And we ultimately also want to provide schema validation to help you, you know, construct valid definition payloads. And the other um, main UI feature we're working on this quarter is the workflow runner. Um, currently, the UI sort of provides observability for past and present running workflows, but triggering a workflow is still limited to the Swagger interface or REST API call, which is really a suboptimal experience. So with this workflow runner, will allow you to execute a workflow from the UI with your um, input payload. It'll integrate with the debug mode that um, Arvind mentioned earlier to sort of provide a user experience for starting and then stepping through workflows you know, during the development and debug process. And we also wanna provide sort of workbench-like interface that sort of allows you to persist your workflow inputs locally in your browser local storage so that you can save and re-invoke your workflows conveniently. And um, we hope to bring these features into the OSS repo e either this quarter or early in Q2. Um, so yeah, so this uh, sort of concludes um, the UI update as well as the, the Netflix uh, roadmap presentation.